Hey, howdy, hey, everybody. Welcome to Young Blood Podcast, episode number 41. We've got a fantastic episode for you today with my boy, Dane Smith. Guys, today we talk about some rugby, we talk about some good old-fashioned camaraderie, and we really catch up on this Young Blood Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey and joining Dane and I on this fantastic conversation. Enjoy this episode 41, y'all. Since see, we've always gone there, so it's like irregular to go somewhere else. Cheers, brother. Cheers, buddy. But, um... How long have you been playing volleyball for? I know you've been playing rugby a long time. Rugby is 16 years, and volleyball is around seven. Started senior year of high school, but that was kind of intermediate. I played indoor right hitter, because I'm a lefty, but then... Uh, Rugby season started, and I was like, all right, I'm calling it, guys. Sorry. <laughs> How are your knees, dude? You're, Honestly, you're the same cool. age as I am. I have, like, two years on you, I think. I'm 28. Dude, it's the back for me. Playing college rugby when I was in the scrum, my my skinny ass was just getting crushed by people that are, like, double my weight. And I just had to hold my own. Barely did, but it was, it was intense. So your knees are fine, then? You don't have any, you don't have any fucking major knee complaints? No, I mean, I'll, I'll get my knees are like sore after a tournament, but it's never like something crazy. I, I never blew a knee out or anything like that. So that's crazy. Rugby's not. Dude, all you're doing the whole time is systematic tackles. Yep. And getting up, <laughs> playing, getting back up, hitting, getting back up. Yeah. I mean, compared to football, you might have like six tackles a game. Rugby will clock in at like maybe 20 to 30. So, yeah, yeah, easy. And. and <laughs> It's so you might not have anything wrong with your knee, but I mean, you've get you've got to have seen at least like. Oh yeah, I have countless knees. So many just teammates. get shot, dude. Oh, it, was, it wasn't just knees. I had uh, one of my college players that we were playing uh, in St. Louis, and they went cheek to cheek on a tackle. Both shattered their eye orbitals. Had to get jaw reconstructive surgery. Like, just and when we heard the crack, like the whole stadium around us, everyone heard like the bone on bone hit. It was just oh, nasty to hear. I want to get this uh, set up to where I kind of can now, like play videos on it and stuff. I have I have a setup to do that. I mean, it's been two years since I've I've even gotten this. Uh, I want to say uh, this far, like I. I I literally, I, I, I had this whole, my whole apartment back in Idaho was to, like, entirely dedicated to um, the podcast. Like yeah. I had a, I had a one bedroom uh, studio apartment, in downtown Boise. And literally like the, the, the first like instance of you walking in, there'd be a, a bathroom, a bedroom, and then my studio, yeah. like the rest of it, like the whole living room and dining area. I just had dedicated to the show. Uh, and at the time, like I had no internet connection. I had barely like the money to pay my rent because I was, I was fucking bar backing at a bar downtown living by myself. Oh yeah. You know? Yeah. So like I was <laughs> struggling. By, yeah. <laughs> oh dude. Like the, the shit I was going through at that time, man, like the podcast for some reason ended up being a priority for me, but it really shouldn't have been. <laughs> If anything, it was a relief from what was going on, I feel like. No, it, it 100% was, man. Like, there's there's 30 people, not 30. I mean, I've done a, uh, 40 shows, 40 episodes, but there's 30 people. Or out of those 40 episodes, I've probably had 20 people because there's been a couple repeat offenders on the, episode, on the show. Sure enough. I mean, um, it's still another person on the show. Yeah, so, so yeah. They, I've had 30 interviews um, I guess 40 interviews. It's, it's, it's been so long. Like this was my daily thing, man. And it, it really is so fun, uh, to just sit here and just banter with somebody and, and to give the opportunity for other people to get onto a platform. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, because like you said earlier, like I've never been on a podcast. I've never done anything like that. And like I responded, I said, nobody that has ever been on the show has, Bringing people in that, I mean, I barely use my phone. So, like, this is out of my reach usually. 
so on the, on the technological like, side, you know, but not on the sitting down and having a conversation side. It's fair. I do that on a daily, but you know, yeah, just the microphones in your face instead of just chatting. Well, it's, it's um, it's immersive. Yeah. Like what it ends up doing is it like, let me sit up here. It kind of makes the conversation go from. You know, hey, we're just like, hey, come over and smoke, bro. Like, hang out. Let's yeah. fucking drink a beer or whatever. And whenever you're with your homies, no matter how long you've known this fucking guy, like years, months, weeks, you got to sit on your phone. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. and that's just a regular thing. And it's like, even if you're somebody who doesn't use their phone a lot, it's became a form of social interaction mm-hmm. to sit on each other phones together yeah, like oh yeah i'm on my check phone this video out something like that is like sit in complete silence and look at fucking memes you yeah know? TikTok, that is a form whatever of whatever it is yeah that is a form of uh social interaction now i mean it's it's just growing up with technology for so long i mean just imagine how the ipad babies are gonna turn out <laughs> they're gonna facetime each other next to each other just to have conversations so that's what i want to study <sighs> ipad babies that oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> just see like the how social they are and my my cousin he's one of the, those kids and it's it's like man you you are gonna have a long time going through like high school and college because interaction face to face right right such like an interesting thing to and experience. that's sorry you that's also why <laughs> uh this platform this show this whole idea isn't just for it's actually not for views whatsoever. This show has given me more convers- 30 conversations, 40 conversations with people that I genuinely like, I genuinely fuck with. Yeah, yeah. There are always people that I like I I want to surround myself with, you know, like they're they're like-minded people. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so at that point um you'll never have anything more than those sitting on a phone hanging out conversations you know even if you go get a drink together at a bar and it's a conversation level of volume you know where you guys want to sit and chit chat it's not that kind of bar where it's loud i guarantee one of you is going to pull out your phone at some point oh yeah you know like that, yeah, that you silence cannot, and it's yeah. just like well i might as well check who texted me or something yeah like and yeah. unless you are getting an emergency phone call or you're expecting a, uh, a business opportunity or something's really important. Not a single person has, like, checked their phone on this show. They don't ever need to. It's never been a fucking, like, oh, man, like, this is really urgent. I need to check this. It's, it's so fucking rare to actually sit down and get this form of communication with our generation nowadays. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, all of my friend group, they're, they'll be sitting on the couch on their phone while we're watching a movie. It's like... Are you experiencing the movie or are you experiencing the video you're watching on your right. phone right now? Like, right. Uh, we watched, uh, what was it called? Shutter Island. Oh, I watched fuck. it for the first yeah, time fuck. just a couple nights ago. And both my friends, I'm sitting there just like edge of the couch, just trying to figure out what's going on. And they're just sitting on their phone, scrolling through whatever. I'm like, I mean, one of them already saw it, but the other one hadn't seen it before. I was like, dude, like you're going to miss. Like the first thing uh, my buddy said was he's like, Pay attention to the movie. Like, Dude, that movie true. made me contemplate so many things. Oh, yeah. You, like, I was questioning, like, am I sane? Like, is this going to happen to me? Like, I'll wake up and, and some you're doctors, what? Like, you are, surprise. you're 20, you're 25, right? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So I watched this movie when I was, like, when did it come out? 2010, I think. I watched I this think. movie when I was in 10th grade, dude. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, so imagine feeling like a 10th grader contemplating whether or not life is real. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, like, wait, what? I remember <laughs> I remember it so vividly. This movie traumatizing me. Shutter oh, Island. Dude, I just watched it two nights ago or three nights ago and it traumatized me there. I was like because I was always thinking, um, what's what's the actor's name? Um big name, uh Wolf of Wall Street actor. Leonardo DiCaprio. That one. Yeah. I was always thinking like, oh, he's getting screwed right now. Thank you. I was about to ask you. I was like, is this mic like you do no. I, I got the new mic coming in the mail, bro. My bad. <laughs> you know, I, could, I was like, do I need this? Like, should I be saying tell to Roger on this? <laughs> but um, no, I, I was the whole time I was questioning, like, is are they trying to, like, murder a bunch of people here? Like, is he actually a cellmate? And I'm not going to ruin it for whoever hasn't seen it, but 
like I, it just had you on the edge of your seat like contemplating like which is the right answer and like what's actually going on here right such right a, such a well played out movie and that's from 2010 like dude i i can't even remember enough of it to like withhold a conversation on the movie i do at least know enough about that movie that that i would probably need a seatbelt to watch it again oh yeah you know oh, like yeah. buckle up and be ready and also don't try to eat any mushrooms or anything because that's probably a terrible idea oh my you, oh. you run out of the room i would run out of the room at least oh, i'd be God. like oh hell no <laughs> i mean it's an insane asylum yeah I, I mean that is not the um uh, mentality you want to put yourself in oh no, no. you're eating mushrooms you're dude. lost at that point you are lost <laughs> not one bit bro i mean i i used to eat mushrooms so like religiously too um in idaho especially because mushrooms are really good um believe it or not never would have guessed never would have cow shit bro it, uh, it grows on enough, cow patties enough, dude yeah. like no like there's people uh, who have farms in Idaho who regularly shoot people because there's people on their property trying to take the mushrooms yeah, from, the, that's from the cow wild. patties, dude. Because <laughs> and also it's not like they're just growing these psychedelic mushrooms. These mushrooms turn out good, yeah. like they're really good mushrooms. Because <laughs> no one's touching them, no one's trying. Yeah, to them. They're man. Just growing all they're natural, just all natural, grass-fed, beef-raised. <laughs> dude, that Idaho Angus beef, bro. Yeah, yeah, that sirloin, top sirloin mushroom. Yeah, out. I'm telling you, and like my boy Will, shout out Will Marshan. Uh, he used to tell me stories like that. That's actually who I heard this from. He was like, yeah, dude, like, and I used to trip with him all the time. <laughs> and he told me one, one time when we were tripping, he's like, bro, cow shit, Northern Idaho. Just, yes, just gotta go, just gotta go at the right time, man. Like these, <laughs> these, these fucking, these farmers will fuck your shit up. You just gotta go at the right time, bro. But I mean, I swear the mushrooms. They're great. I'm not absolutely not. One, I'd be too scared about eating the wrong mushroom. Like, oh, it has different colors. It means it's probably going to be crazier. Nope. That's Poisonous. Fair. That's <laughs> fair. That's very fair. Number two. That's very fair. <laughs> I pop those mushrooms on that field. And all of a sudden, I'm having a horrible trip because the farmer is trying to shoot me while I'm tripping. <laughs> no, that's very, very fair. I honestly, though, that's kind of how I feel because. Of being in a town now that it's de decriminalized, um, I genuinely feel less of a desire to want to eat the mushrooms. Mm -hmm. uh, being in Idaho, there's nothing to do. Yeah, there's nothing to do. I mean, we got it's, so much out here. Yeah, it's here. a it's it's so more it's so much more cool. Yeah, you know, yeah. like oh, somebody's like, oh, I got some mushrooms. You're like. Hi, you know, I'm gonna use some fucking mushrooms tonight. Here's somebody's like, oh, I got some mushrooms. mushrooms like <laughs> and you're just like, okay, cool. I got some at home too, bro. Like, yeah. I'm not feeling like tripping right now because, dude, I would like, dude, you'd look at me and you'd have a mushroom in your hand. I would eat it. Sold. Yeah. Dude, every time. Um, every fucking time. You would, you'd be like, hmm. And I would just be like, I don't care what the fuck I was doing, what the situation was, where I was at, I would eat it. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, now that I live in Colorado, I'm like, okay, I don't gotta be like that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> if you go hiking, you experience crazy stuff. All the time, <laughs> oh, if so. I go hiking, I'm still gonna eat mushrooms. But I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't feel like the super hardcore urge to just like devour mushrooms all oh, the time. Yeah. Like, no, absolutely not. But I mean, everybody in Idaho smokes crack, bro. Like, it's it's crazy. Like, Idaho is such like a like it used to be a meth town back in 2000 and five to 2010 to 2015 you know meth and and then from 2015 to 2018 it was oxycontin oh, uh and i remember so you know kaiwachi never heard of it the the musician artist like the the hardcore fucking dubstep fucking uh, -uh. uh musician you ever heard of sullivan king nope nope Okay, awesome though a lot of people <laughs> all three of the people who might listen to this episode they might know one of those people. Uh, Fair enough. And that being said, like Sullivan King and, and Kai Watch are huge in the hardcore EDM scene. Okay. Uh, and when I say hardcore EDM, not like I'm a hardcore raver, I rave all the time, hardcore. Yeah, yeah. But like hard style, 
like metal style intense like yeah intense like it's style. metal music mixed with dubstep it's their style oh, okay yeah so i i i know now that's a little too intense for me <laughs> yeah i mean i do get down on some screamo bro like Fair i play not. the drums i fuck around with some with some heavy music you know and some not so heavy emo music you know like some pierce the veil like some fucking uh Mainly, it's my girlfriend. She's a retired scene girl from the from the early two thousands. But oh yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Fair <laughs> enough. I've always been like reggae, country. I mean, I listen to a lot of, but I never could get into screamo. Like, I don't know. I need to get you into Catastro. Never, never. Right even. here, dude. Oh, it's like killer like, reggae. Killer oh, reggae. reggae. Okay. It's like reggae mixed with like. A Mac Miller vibe almost. Oh, I can. So I can it's get it's rap reggae. Oh, okay. You know for sure rap reggae. Like that's just what that's it is. Sick, it's yeah. like hip hop vibe. Like he raps a lot. They sing reggae a lot. Like he's a hip hop singer. Uh, that's in a reggae band. But uh, that's also rest in peace. He has passed the guy that I'm talking about. Uh, Andy from uh, Catastro uh, died uh, last year. <laughs> Um, crazy story. So you love reggae, right? Oh yeah. Um, and actually, I don't think I've ever told the story on the podcast. I have a lot of crazy stories. This is one that hasn't made it on the show. Um, Catastro, Andy, uh, absolutely phenomenal fucking reggae singer. He got super close in with the Dirty Heads. They were recording. So he was in Southern California recording with the Dirty Heads, um, and he was in a Tesla Uber with a chick. Mm -hmm. uh, and they died in the car crash, in a car crash in that Uber. Yeah, was the driver testing like autopilot or just? Like I don't know exactly what happened, but everybody died. The driver, the the passengers, wow. they all died. Because Teslas are supposed to have like sturdy. Yeah, and like so I don't know. I don't remember. I did look into it, but I'm not going to say it, especially because I'm being recorded. Um, enough to speak on. Yeah, yeah. Um, details wise, but I do uh, have some fun stories about that. Uh, so. Me and Tiffany, on our move here to Colorado, mm -hmm. uh, we stopped in Salt Lake and stayed there for a couple of days. And she was like, dude, Catastro's in, in Salt Lake. We have to stay a couple extra days and see him. Like, we're already just traveling. Like, let's just fucking make it a longer trip. I was yeah, like, cool, yeah. let's do it. Uh, and so we see Catastro, probably one of the most fun, intimate shows I've ever been to. You know, it was a very small venue. Not very many people were there, but it was all, uh, clearly a very good yeah. Artist, everyone's you know, the time of their life. Not even around. just that, but they just fucking killed it. You yeah. know, they performed amazingly. Um, and I remember it was one of the cat, the band members' birthdays that night, so they were um extra diligent about meet and greet. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Tiff had uh this sweater on her that was a sublime sweater, and I stayed and I got every one of the band members to sign a sweater. Oh, that's sick. The whole band. Good boyfriend. And then, good right? Boyfriend. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, dude, fucking after I get him to sign, everybody leaves the whole fucking venue. And it's just the band and, like, the bar is still open and mm -hmm. me and Tiff. And I'm chilling with the lead singer, just me and the homie. Like, we're just vibing, talking, having a drink after the show. Me and Andy. And, like, my girlfriend's such a fangirl of him that she's, like, low-key pissed. She's, yeah. like, <laughs> she's standing there in the corner like, dude, what the fuck? Like, you guys are <laughs> vibing right now? And, like, I was, like... The homie Chris, he's their photographer. I had a camera part for his Canon 8E1, and I was like, dude, I've got a fucking speed uh, rack reloader that goes on the bottom of that, so that way every time you click it, it just zzz, automatically fucking goes over for you like a digital camera, and it's a film camera. My, my mind went Call of Duty on there. I was like, speed reloader? Yeah, it is, so it's a battery-powered like uh, motor on the bottom of a film camera that automatically does a little ch ch for you so you don't have to do it every time so when you're a fast shooter for like concerts and stuff it, it helps okay and i wasn't using it the girl that i was dating at the time uh that was uh, relevant with that camera took the camera and left me that part so i was like fuck dude i'm not using this and i asked the, the photographer if he wanted it and uh that led me to get some free tickets to another couple shows in the future but <laughs> uh homie yeah, hookup yeah but fucking that night i'm sitting there vibing with andy the lead singer i'm like dude my girlfriend's such a big fan of you guys like you guys are super tight 
do you fucking care if I steal one of your tattoos, bro? Like, fucking, we're just going to get it as a band fan, a fan band tattoo, you know? Yeah, yeah. And he's like, dude, not at all. I don't care one fucking bit. Pull your phone out, take a picture of it. You can do it all day. And so it's the tattoo that says, fuck you, right on his chest, <laughs> right? But it also says, it says fucking love you. That's trippy. Yeah. My like, mind was trying to read that several times. Yeah, so like the way the script is done on a tattoo, it, you can read it multiple ways. It either says, fuck you, or it says, love you. And Just where your mind's at. Yeah, I mean, it depends on how you read it, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so he gave us consent to get that tattoo, and me and my girlfriend went and tagged him in it and shit, and it was super fun and awesome. That's awesome. Uh, and he, needless to say, passed away. In that car wreck, and we were like, oh my god, dude, I'm fucking so glad we got those That's tattoos, wild. right? Yeah, you're carrying on his message right there on your on your belly. Fuck you. Or like, <laughs> yeah, whichever one. Could whichever. Go either way. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, though. I haven't met anyone famous. That I remember, at least, you know. I, um, my 19th birthday, um, Stone Cold Steve Austin and his wife were doing business with my uncle. Uh, so they joined us for dinner. I, I'm not going to lie. I have no clue who that Stone is. Stone Cold Steve Austin, Is he like bro. a fighter? He sounds like a UFC fighter. No, he's a wrestler from the 90s. Uh, my parents this? wouldn't... I know that. My parents yeah. wouldn't let me watch WWE. I'm sorry if I squirted me <laughs> no, a little I'll beer. I'll good. It's just beer. <laughs> I had to do it. I had to. Yeah, so you're making a point Stone there. Cold. Oh, oh, hello. You stay back there, but I'll pet you. I'll Gets me. Out. Out, out, out. I'm sorry. I'm... Dogs are not allowed in this room. It's okay, you can go. Uh, but yeah, Stone Cold Steve Austin, the, the 90s wrestler. I'm not going to lie, that was one of the best beer smashes I've ever done. <laughs> I was surprised. <laughs> it's like, what is he doing? Oh, okay. Now I know who it is. Awesome. All right, that guy. Okay, is he chilling? That's fine. He's okay. Yeah, lay down, Gatsby. You can chill by my legs. Lay I'll down, pet you. Lay down, lay down. How about that? Yeah, he's not gonna. Dis- he's not a very destructive dog. He's not gonna go after your food. He's not gonna um, cause a problem or anything. Like he's a, he's a good boy. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go grab another beer real quick, my brother. Uh, while I do that, you're gonna tell a quick story about uh, rugby and how you got into it. Uh, 16 years ago, dude. Plenty of concussions, but I still kind of remember. Started rugby uh, with a South African named Real Detroit. He uh, was going to my parents' church and offered me to play touch rugby. And I was like, oh, that, that sounds kind of lame, to be honest. Tried it out one time. I was like, there's not enough contact. I'm playing full contact football. There's no, no reason to really play touch rugby. Um, tried it out a couple years ago when there, I could do contact called U10s. Um, U15s, U14s, started playing sevens, and uh, appreciate the re-up. And water, look at it. What a good guy. Got you, bro. Squeeze in here. Got you. But uh, real, just grew that passion for rugby for me. I I started playing, uh, what was it, seventh grade? Eighth grade played, played pretty much the rest of my life. I've been taking kind of sabbatical because of the injuries, but played uh, high school with the Falcons, Terrors, the Grizzlies, all Colorado Springs teams. Um, ended up playing in college on a uh, scholarship at a place called Lindenwood Belleville. Uh, had a blast with my mates there. We actually got to play at the Las Vegas Sevens International Tournament. Um, super, super fun time. We actually, uh, we made it to finals. We were facing Kutztown in finals about to play on the actual international pitch where all the French international team, Japan, everyone, Zimbabwe, uh, Samoa, Somalia, all the teams are joining up. Uh, we got to practice next to, next to the French international team and the uh, Japanese international team. Oh, shit. Yeah, it was super fun. But we're... we're uh, so we're in the Olympic City, <laughs> USA, man. This is already competitive as, as it gets out here, I feel like. Rugby, it's not big enough for us to be... I mean, sevens, we're on real X. We got Perry Baker, Carla Niles. We got a bunch of beefcakes that are out there. But uh, 15s, we got too much football knowledge, and it kind of screws us over on our 15s game. World Cup's actually coming up this uh, this fall, and U.S. is not going to be a contender. The French are probably the top team right now. Ireland's looking good. Scotland's looking all right. 
of course, South Africa and New Zealand are going to be one of those top competitors. Fun fact, one of my biggest countries of downloads of this show, New Zealand. Oh, Kiwis. Dude, oh, yeah. I don't know why, <laughs> I don't know how, but for some strange reason, I'm going to have to clean this soundboard after crushing that beer. <laughs> We're, it was totally it got over there, though. I mean, it was I like, like on the armrest, and then most of it, your head, and then some on the carpet. So I mean, none of it got on my computer. I am not mad about that one bit. I mean, it was it was, like, it was, it was, it was fairly yeah. empty, yeah. <laughs> but for the sake of timing, I didn't get a good kill. On yeah, the last little yeah. bit of it, you know, and that's on me. I should have. It's also a 16 ounce, not a 12 ounce. So I you don't know. Those, are, those are like eight ounces for me, dude. <laughs> They're PBRs, I man. It's a 32 ounce for me. So <laughs> we on opposite levels. On uh, the New Zealand, no, it was, dude, I don't know why, though. Like, I, so I have, obviously, everybody's got analytics. You know, they've got their analytics. You can check, you can see. Uh, and I had. Over two years ago, it was over 1,000 downloads. And what a download is, is like when somebody actually streams and watches your whole episode. Or like not a whole episode. They have it on their phone downloaded and they're watching it. Like if so you're about to plays. watch a video on like an airplane or something? It's not necessarily plays. Plays oh, okay. and downloads are different. It's like they're saving it for later. Yeah, but they like yeah. you cannot get um, multiple downloads. Like you can get multiple plays from the same person. Oh, okay. One okay. one person, one download. Yeah, it solidifies that. Yeah, yeah, you know that person downloaded it. They can listen as many times. A lot of that or not. Okay, but it's not going to mark up your mentality. right. Exactly, yeah, yeah. dude. I had one thousand downloads in that's over twelve different amount. countries. That's a yeah. You know, so they also that's wild that New Zealand's on the top. One. Dude, that's what yeah. I thought too. I was like, what the fuck? I mean, maybe this will bring it back up, bringing rugby back. Hey, <laughs> and a lot of it was the premise. Like the show was just something that p probably people didn't like. You have have another way of experiencing. Like who who from Idaho do you know? Like, what are you gonna? Like not a soul, not a fucking thing. You don't know anybody from Idaho. You don't know a person. You don't know the culture. Yes, there's culture. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I mean, like it's. I feel like people in New Zealand got a taste of that. Yeah, Do you know, like something United States. You hear about California, New York, Boston, Chicago, like the big cities. But you never like what's going on in Ohio, other than the Buckeyes. People follow right. that, right? <laughs> And there's these these small parts that people I feel like are interested. They're tired of always hearing about Cali vibes and Chaka Bra <laughs> and whatever, but it, they never hear about the the potato farmers out in Idaho. <laughs> oh, you're preaching to the choir. Anybody from Idaho that's listening to this show um, will give you a sense of camaraderie when they tell you that Idaho does not like people from California, just like people from Colorado do not <sighs> like people from California. And it's hilarious and it's not necessarily they don't like the people i feel it's they don't like the uh, lack of difference the lack of variety the lack of bringing something new to the table you're like hey how are you what's your name i'm bill where are you from california Ugh, i'm about to have the same conversation i've had a hundred times yeah. <laughs> you know nice that's beach, how you feel. got it like cool you got good boardwalks but <laughs> right so i have to ask you you said she made this. The, not the tots. She made the asparagus, seasoned all that up. She I was made, about to be like, bro, like she made you these tots. Of, so are those tater tots? What is that? They're veggie tots. Try it, dude. They're actually not bad at all. She's trying to get me on this health grind. I'm I'm with it. I mean. You see, I cook everything in my house. So I have complete control of what we eat. Oh, yeah. It's too much power. <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> That's my girlfriend right now. She, she, it's too much power. She cooks stuff for me. It's so good, but it's also like, she's such a health nut. She's always, she knows well, what to put in the meal to make the calories. and the Yeah, not me, and, dude. I know what to put in the meal to make it taste good, bro. Yeah, I know yeah. that salt. I know that paprika. Oh, I know yeah. that garlic, you know. But that's because I'm Italian, dude. Like, and I cook, I cook, um, I cook for the straight dopamine rush. Like, you, you, I cook yeah. yeah, because like, the the simple look on somebody's face after I've been able to cook them a meal and be like, you know what, dude, fucking, what do you think? How'd I do? How was it? And they're like, <laughs> holy fuck, bro. Like, yeah. that was so fucking good, dude. You just, like, see them trying to 
taste every flavor with every taste bud. They're just like, yeah, oh, dude, oh, like yeah, literally, yeah. no, for <laughs> sure. And it gives you this super sense of um, satisfaction, man. Like you just absolutely love seeing people enjoy your food and and getting um, smiles out of it. And oh yeah, and it's also because I don't cook at work you know what i mean like i'm lucky enough to pour drinks and actually like right now i'm a bar manager that's not doing anything at all because i'm on dis i'm, I'm on leave i'm on yeah medical work leave i torn acl because of my house dude right <laughs> luckily so, ryan was there i was i was like and i remember that night so well because Mur runs up and she's uh ryan's girlfriend he's uh she's like uh ryan's getting in a fight i was like what <laughs> okay i'm coming I come over and it's like just ending the scuffle. I was like, I don't even know what happened. Like, why is anyone mad? We're all here having a good time. Turns out people are trying to jump you and Ryan jumped in. And I was like, all right. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I, uh, other way, Ryan. Ryan was getting in a fight and I was trying to play a peacekeeper. And I jumped in between Ryan and the fight. I was like, no, no, no. Mainly because I was like, yo, who the fuck are you? And why are you trying to fight people who live here? It was mainly the, the owner of the house's friends also. And yeah. And that was, time. that was the main thing. Like, it wasn't like, Hey, you're going to fight Ryan. I'm going to fuck you up. It was like, yo, I'll drop you and I'll drop you. Both of you knock it off. Kind of shit. Like, yeah. let's end this beef. Yeah. My, my thing beef. was, yo, you're an idiot. For, you're fighting the wrong dude is what I said. To the fucking dude starting the shit. And then Ryan, I was like, why are you fighting? You don't, yeah. you don't need to fight. There's no sense in this. But right he now. was in the right at the moment, so I couldn't really be like, hey, don't fight. So yeah. I was more along the lines of like, hey, bro, wrong place, wrong time. Yeah. Do not try this right now. You know, so not and because I had it. vibed with the guy earlier that was starting the fight. Uh, and I was like, hey, dude, like fucking try to chill out. And then they started throwing hands. And that's when I just got fucking in. And we went over the flower bed. Yeah, I remember Jeremy running out the front door, tackling some dude, and he tackled him over that rock uh, rock wall <laughs> over the flower bed. That's itself. what happened, yeah, dude. I was in between, and then that tackle fucking <laughs> made my knee go sideways. And I guess I already had a torn ACL. Uh, and so when I went to the doctor, like, dude, yeah, you have a complete, uh, you have a full body tear of your ACL. Uh, here, let me, I'll read it. Read it out loud for you. What what, what the doctor's yeah, prognosis is? I, I ain't no doctor, so I don't know. If this shit's body gnarly, tear. dude. I thought your ACL is from like your your glutes to your your ankle or some shit like that. So the doctor's note says, um, excuse me, it was from fucking two months ago. Was it two months? Only two months ago? Like no, was two months ago when I tore my meniscus. Oh, again, I like was it. thinking about the incident. I was like, I swear that was like. A, a year or it was year over a new year's oh so less than a year yeah it was oh. over new year's that i like heard it again and then i let it heal up so what i think it was is i already had the torn acl and you just you didn't go to the doctor and then fix. um that night i tore my meniscus oh because i have two tears in my meniscus right now and i already had a full body tear of my acl but i remember dude like i have already had a pretty hurt knee and i've heard it a few times that night, I I was like, oh fuck! I hit it hard and I couldn't walk. I was like, fuck! Like, I, I don't was, know how you're walking right now. <laughs> <laughs> that makes no sense. So, to me. dude, wait till you hear what. So, when I got the MRI two months ago, I went to the ER because basically that happened on New Year's and I let it heal up and then it happened again. So I tore my meniscus and then I retore my meniscus, and that's when I went to the ER. Is after I retore it because I was like, the whole reason I didn't get it taken care of properly the first time. It's because over uh, New Year's, I thought I didn't have fucking insurance. So I was over here just being all frivolous and stupid. Oh, I mean, trying to pay that off. Yeah, I mean, at that point, like an ACL tear is something that you're not going to handle without insurance usually. Oh, and no. That's when you're just like, well, I'm a walk with a limp or I'm going to need a cane the rest of my life. At least yeah, that's literally. the way I'd take it. I'd just be like, well, right sorry, screwed. it took me a minute. You good. <laughs> so the note says, this is my MRI follow up. To whom it may concern, uh, Casey Young is currently in my medical care and the imaging of his left knee revealed full thickness tear of the ACL. Complex tearing of the posterior horn and body of the medial meniscus with extension to the posterior horn and root. 
That's so <laughs> wild. I played He's, rugby for 16 years. The worst I got is a cracked sternum. And you're over here tearing MCL, ACL, posterior tear. Whatever. Yeah, dude. I, I <laughs> fucked my shit up. And, and the crazy thing is, like, the week that they diagnosed me with that, they were like, or I was literally at the gym biking 16 miles on the speed bike, bro, in an hour. After like 16 miles an hour, 17 miles an hour, just fucking full sending in on a fucking good workout. You know, I'd wear a knee brace and my shit would hurt. And I'd be like, oh, that doesn't feel right. You know, but I'd still send it and go. And like, I need to be in shape. And then the doctor's like, dude, what the fuck is wrong with you? And I'm like, <laughs> I was like, what? And she's You're like, dude. To be bedridden. I was right like, now. so how bad's my knee? And she's like, dude. How are you walking? And I was yeah. like, sometimes with a cane. <laughs> I was about to say, you got a cane posted up right there. That's my cane, dude. But that's actually, that's my cane for my hip dysplasia. That's not my, that's not my cane for my knee. That's, that's why I don't feel my knee. Now. Yeah, You're that's why I don't feel my knee, bro. Because like my, my hip dysplasia, I'm like, I'm constantly at a level of yeah. pain, you know? So I'm just, I ride at it, you know? And I'm just like, if I get a, a hard spasm of like really intense pain, like the most I'll do is I'll just go, you know, just yeah, fucking yeah. grit for a second and then it'll go away. But like, that's a lot of what it is with hip dysplasia. It's like, it's hardcore lightning-esque spasms, you know, like they just kind of come out of fucking nowhere. And like, yeah. to me, I've already had, so I had cortisone injections. Um, And the cortisone injections that I had were different than other ones because I guess... They weren't for the pain. They were to give the doctor some kind of information for the surgery I needed because I guess like um, uh, what I thought, I was like, dude, I don't want no needles in my fucking legs like that. If it's just going to numb me up for a couple months and then it's all going to go away, that's a Band-Aid. Oh, yeah. And you know, usually with with the medication you take, you grow numb to the medication also. So and I don't, well, I don't medicate. I don't take any medication for, for any pain whatsoever. That's good, but yeah. that's probably so fucked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, good I'm for really... you, good on you, but also, like, I'm sorry for you, dude. That sucks. I mean... No, I don't take nothing. I don't even take ibuprofen, bro. And I do smoke cannabis, like, heavily, but, I mean, that's yeah, that's that, what I got. I got, do. I got a license to, to buy a, a pound of weed per day. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, and that's that's new. So I used to, like, before it was half pound. I just got it increased a pound. They're just like, dude, you're, My, you're screwed up. Yeah, I've got, <laughs> got a 48 plant license, so I can grow 48 plants. So you can be your own like dispensary basically. yeah i can but can in get... el paso county they cap at 12 no matter how no matter if i had a, even if my plant license was 99 which is the biggest one you can get doesn't matter uh because the springs were medicinal still we're not even that right. and so the, the weird thing is it used to matter because i would get a discount so like i would award my 99 plants to the dispensary that would grow for me and i would get a discount from them for that because okay. then their grow up would then be bigger because I give them 99 more plants. Yeah, you're growth. giving them a come up. Yeah. yeah, now this new law that they passed in January uh, makes it to the point where that doesn't even matter. Um, so me being somebody that benefits from having the higher plant count and getting the discount, uh, now it does not benefit unless I buy in bulk. So it's, it's kind of fucked. Because before, it made it to where I cannot buy in bulk mm -hmm. and benefit. You know, and still going and buy every other day this, uh, an ounce or this it's or that. It's almost like telling you not price. to buy in bulk and you'll still have this. Same yeah, benefit. So, but now I still get a discount for buying not in bulk just because of uh, the fact that I have that license. They give me a discount for, for being a license holder. But in order to actually get really beneficial discounts, I got to buy in bulk. Yeah. You know, I got to buy that whole pound or, you know, half pound or whatever. Which I do. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Yeah, use what you got, dude. Don't don't take it for granted. Which is so cool, dude. This show went from not even being allowed to talk about weed to like it being a normality. To being <laughs> to the point where I'm legally licensed to buy a pound of weed per day yeah. medically. Not because I scammed the system. Not because I I know somebody. Not because I know the paperwork. Because I'm diagnosed with fucking chronic pain, dickheads. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's useful in so many manners. I mean, I know people that are, like, even military vets and stuff like that. Like, they recommend it to them because it's right. so beneficial. Like, my dad, he has 
t trouble sleeping and I'd love to I mean I'd, I'd recommend CBD to him but he'll, he won't go into the, the THC side of things but that's how a lot of people are though I mean there's a very large um, crowd consensus stigma around THC because it gets you high it alters your mind it's, it gets you high yeah you know what I mean it's not people. it's not something that has just medicinal benefit it gets you fucking high do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what it is, is you're getting high. And, like, you have to think about it in a sense of, like, so my older brother, he's the, the complete, um, like, he's by bloodline. We're very similar human beings in a lot of ways, but we're polar opposites. Yeah. And that's only because he is sober. You know, and that's not because he's sober because he's a he's a prissy little prick or something. It's sober because he went too hard. Oh, you know, yeah. he went too hard when he was younger and he had to fucking quit. He scarred himself. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. and he, he literally fucking, he went too hard for too long, too fast. And, you know, and um, it put him in a position now where he is the director of operations at a, a men's living community. And he does very well for himself. I'm sure. I'm but it's entirely derived around that sober lifestyle that sober mentality that um very different lifestyle you know it's I guess the only way to put it because you know if i have a conversation with him uh i don't hold back ever it's always like i'm real with my brother still i don't make his sobriety like a crutch on our relationship yeah yeah you know i'll i'll smoke weed right in front of him i'll rip a bong in front of him i'll take dabs in front of him i don't fucking care i'm sorry you're my older brother dude you're 10 years fucking older than me we shared a room for fucking 16 years i ain't gonna treat you no different it's not my fault you fucked up you're still my brother in I mean, my it's eyes just a life choice. in my yeah, eyes I'm, yeah you know in my eyes that's how yeah, i see it that's yeah. how i treat them you know i'm like you know what to me i'm gonna treat you the same as i always would have like i'm not gonna offer you i'm not gonna hinder like, you want to borrow it like no i'm not gonna do that kind of shit but, I mean, he's also expressed to me his strength mm. in the past. He said, it doesn't bother me. Yeah. You know, so it's not like I'm just a dickhead. You know, he has also been like, hey, you know, it doesn't bother me. You don't have to be not yourself around me. I'm like, yeah. say less. This, uh, you, you know, don't tell me. Don't tell up. me. Yeah. If you don't want it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let me know. I'll stop. Yeah. Right. And, and he hasn't done that, you yeah. know. And it's gotten to a point, like, um, I was taking a dab. He was in town the other day. Uh, and I was taking a dab in front of him with a torch that wasn't very good, and then and it just it just looked like janky old school dabbing shit. And he goes into the vape store to go buy a vape, and he comes out with a a brand Seahorse. new fucking no a brand new seahorse electric dab fucking slurper, like a hundred dollar rig. Oh my god! And he's like, here, dude, couldn't handle you doing that shit no more. <laughs> what? Looking out? Baby. Yeah, and I hate electric dab straws personally because I've tried them before. They suck. This one was great. Tried. This really? one was great. Yeah, super awesome. Didn't complain one bit about it, dude. That would I? And then it fell out of my pocket and broke, so I haven't used it since it broke. But I mean, it was great until that point, <laughs> dude. I swear, <laughs> like, there's like heavyweight, lightweight, and alcohol. Lightweight. I am straight lightweight when I smoke. It's like really half a hit and i'm like i'm chilling God damn it i'm a lightweight when i break the seal <laughs> go do your thing bro <laughs> i got watch out gatsby oh you you got my cord i got my headphones off well done unfortunately i don't ever edit those parts out <laughs> but it's all good it shows the experience to the novices you know that's why i'm good on road trips I'm also going to screw myself over because I'm going to have to piss right after he gets back. Gatsby's got me, though. Oh. Huh. You are hairy-ass dog. Yo. Any of these buttons going to screw something up? Some... No, you're, you're, I'm going to hit my elbow on some shit. No, you're totally fine, bro. All right. Oh, dude, it feels so good to have this show fucking back up and going, man. It was two years. <laughs> I'm sure. I two mean, year long hiatus. I've never, I've never been in this kind of area of life. 
never been a, a podcaster, but I mean, it's it's nice. I mean, you're just chatting, and also I feel like it's it's a release. You got stressful work, you got stressful whatever. It's like I'm gonna go on podcast, see see if anyone enjoys what we're conversating about. If not, like, so yeah, and that's a that's a um, a benefit that kind of comes in as an extra, you know, because with this whole show, this is the part we get. Yeah. This yeah. is the part that matters, you know, and every YouTube episode that I've posted and everything that I've done, um, none of it's been for views. One of my, one of my episodes on YouTube the other day actually fucking popped off and went, went from like 15 to like 300, 400 views out of nowhere. And I was like, what the fuck? I couldn't imagine. And it's gonna be like negative two on this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was take because, down this video. <laughs> yeah, that was because YouTube, I guess, uh, suggested my video for like a week or so, and just like that video. Oh, it's like your for you page. They're like something. I don't know what it was, but YouTube helped me out, and it just oh, like yeah. it just like it steamrolled on that episode. It brought to you by YouTube. So. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Hey, for real, YouTube. Like, I've. Also, congratulations, Jungle Podcast, on your absolute first 1,000 views on YouTube. By the way, that's a big one. I'm still at zero. Yeah, YouTube's a yeah, tough one, man. Like, uh, I never did the YouTube for the YouTube views, but I put it on YouTube so people could access the show because there have been a lot of people that ask where is it video. I'm like, yeah, it's a video show. Like, they're like, they like to see this part of it, they like to see us talk, they like to be. You know, blah, 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 see me fucking change the cameras and do that. Humanizes it. Yeah, yeah and a lot of the shows, this one, not so much. That camera will be on you. This camera will be on me. And every time you're talking, I'll I had it on switched, you. Because this one's kind of angled, but I can see that. Uh, I'll look at this camera the whole time, just throw everyone off. Well, I'm, no, you don't have to look I'm, at the camera I'm, either. And what I'll do, though, is when I'm talking, it'll be on it'll, it'll be on this this one right there when I'm talking. La, da, da, da. And when you're talking, it'll be on that one. Oh, it's audio out. Yeah, I see. And and it's controlled by my keyboard, but the way I uh, try to do it is so it kind of gives the video a directional sense. Who's yeah. talking? It it shows like oh this person, this person, the this ginger's person. talking or yeah. <laughs> and I to the point where shout out to Camden Sutton. I know we're not that good of friends anymore, but you used to be helping me out on the show all the fucking time, buddy. Still love you. Uh, he used to be the producer for me and he'd sit over in the corner and he'd run the keyboard so every time somebody was talking and I didn't have to pay attention to both of it you know and so there's a lot of really good episodes out there where it's like that the whole episode yeah yeah where and it's like like I said where I'm facing you and you're facing me we're talking to each other there's none of this like back and forth kind of none of the um, formalities of talking to a mic it, it, it really makes a difference in my eyes when it's me and you talking in front of each other versus this side to side stuff because I have done a couple other shows like this side to side in the past. You know, this yeah. isn't the first one, won't be the last. I feel like it's just preference, though. I mean, you picture like Joe Rogan's podcast or something like that. I don't feel like they switch up the camera at all. I mean, every time just, somebody's talking, it's another person speaking. It maybe I, I just don't. And know they do that on purpose like because it's not meant to table. be a thing. It's not meant to be something you notice. What is that I meant know to be? Podcasts though, that it's just like the table. And they don't change the, the camera at all. It's just like... But that the, makes the it... Like that a newscast it. or something when they're broadcasting. But that makes it... You keep looking up at the TV. Yeah, I follow you. I'm like, what are we doing? <laughs> <are we> <laughs> and normally, uh, I would actually have that TV connected to. Show, so you to can show see it. Like which one yeah, but you know, everything today, this is the first fucking show in two years you guys like i i can be more proud more satisfied and more ecstatic to have dane here to even give me his time tonight Always but happy. i do this for for myself to be selfish honestly but at the at the end of the day there's been a lot of people who have benefited from this have benefited from the interaction who've genuinely every single person have thanked me when they come on afterwards and that's the weirdest part it's because you never expect that. Yeah, yeah. It's because to me, I thank you. You came out, you gave me your time, you're here in my house, you went out of your way. Like to me, you're that, a guest star on my show kind of thing. Yeah. 100%. You don't have to do this. You don't have to be here. Like, I don't owe you. You don't owe me anything. Mm -hmm. You know, like. I mean, technically, you're, you're providing the beers, so. Man, still, though, man. Yeah, I got like, some veggie tops. <laughs> <and some laughs> but you don't owe me nothing, bro. Like, I, I invited you out here. And I, 
I gave you this opportunity, and to me, you showing up is is payment. Hey, that's you know, and I have there was in Boise a time when I had a I had a wait list to go on the show of about ten people. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't make it on that wait list. <laughs> <laughs> I had a wait list of about ten people. I mean, like, it wasn't dude, necessarily a wait list per se. Like, don't get me wrong. It wasn't like a wait list. Like, you had to fucking yeah, call. Like VIP. Ass. Like, nah. But party. it was like I had. I had. A, I had a schedule. Yeah. Scheduled yeah. out for ten people, bro. It was tight. It was That's super sick, fun. Yeah. So don't get me wrong. I had a wait list. Like, nah, man. There was no prestigious. All right. Fuck no. This shit ain't no prestige, bro. <laughs> we drink beers and smoke bowls, man. It's a good time. Oh yeah. By the way, guys, if you haven't had a chance yet, check out Young Blood Podcast. Whatever platforms you may need, we are on everything: Apple, Spotify, YouTube, whatever you may need, and wherever you get your podcasts. All one word: Young Blood Podcast, guys. No spaces. All one word, and that's everything. Y O U N G B L O O D P O D C A S T Young Blood Podcast. All one word, y'all. Check it out if you haven't yet. But, anyways, so I did. I did give us some structure on the day. Hell yeah, I got you, brother. Yeah, hand me that, would you? Oh no, I do. I do see a little bit of beer on my monitor over there, actually. Oh yeah! I see. <laughs> hey, good for you. Good I mean, it was worth it. It was worth it. I forgot <laughs> that on camera too. <laughs> oh, you did absolutely. Casey Crush's beer on podcast. I mean, right. maybe not the driblets that are popping off, but they definitely <laughs> saw the the can hitting your head. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it was the Brio camera, this Logitech, that thing is a fucking badass. I highly recommend. They're about two hundred bucks or hundred bucks or so. Um, and that one's all digital. It's, it does everything for you. That that one's an actual fucking uh, camcorder, camcorder yeah. uh, that I have converted with an HD. And so HDMI goes into a HDMI converter uh, capture card that puts it into the computer and makes it into a webcam. So that's technically what I could do with that connected to the TV. It would show the same picture. Yeah. yeah. You know. Um, it's it's professional stuff towards my eyes my adolescent eyes <laughs> <laughs> i mean you keep saying that like it's like i'm doing something crazy here does it actually really seem like there's a lot going on here is there i mean to me i i just i'm never around this stuff like i, I barely use my telephone but it did take phone. me it did take me three years to get to the point of where i feel um I feel like I can really comfortably work with the equipment work with the recording stuff and like ask people to come out here and give me their time because I have been traumatized with wasting people's time where they come out and the and the show got corrupted or something happened to where like two or three hours of their time of me and you doing this, you know, there's nothing more defeating than this part and how fun we how much fun we had and then being told, hey man. Hey, we just in my nothing book we're out. chatting. That's all it is. Whether exactly. it's live or not, it's just hey, we got a fun conversation. <laughs> so, are you big on stand up? That's that's a question. Stand up con- I have a couple friends that are in stand up, but me, I I'll watch it, but I I've, I've never tried to partake in it. You're not so you're not a very big advocate. You don't watch. You don't you don't try to do or. Oh, I watch. Yeah. But you I'll watch. watch. Okay, yeah. you watch. Okay, so. My question is like, why, how, or not necessarily why or how? What do you think uh, has been majorly affected by uh, COVID? in the stand-up community. Like, what is the biggest factor from COVID that affected the stand-up comedians? Uh, this may sound harsh, but I feel like people's, like, getting their emotions mixed in with stand-up. Like, people are just joking around. They're making jokes. I mean, picture, like, what is it? Will Smith? What are, go ahead. Treat yourself. Uh, Will Smith, smacking, what's his name? On um, It's like, people are taking the jokes too serious, too literal, when it's like, you're on the stage making, cracking jokes. Like, of course, it may sound offensive, but it's also like they're getting paid to do this. Like, they, of course, they're going to say some some stuff that may hurt some people's feelings, but it's a part of the show. And so I, I feel like that's kind of making it uh, a, kind of a battle between the comedians and the audience. Because the, the comedians now have to be more, like, stringent on their topics and they have to know 100%. their audience a lot more. Like, they're going to a certain state or... I don't even know country. I'm, I'm I've never been out of the state, so I, I can't say country. But it, it makes it harder for the comedian now because they now gotta attend to the every single person that audience needs, 
instead of just walking. So the up. hardest the hardest part of the pandemic for comedians was the rise in cancel culture. That's the best way of putting it. Yeah. Okay. Instead of rambling on like no, that, yeah, so rude. Wait, no, it, that's it's that's like awesome because being wet blankets, um, basically, it's just like taking things to heart where it's not meant to be taken to heart. Like that's awesome because another thing I was gonna ask you is like what your opinion was on what cancel culture has done to stand-up comedians. <laughs> it's ruined. The, I feel like it's ruined some people's careers. I mean, I don't I don't watch it enough to, like, really recognize whether it does or does not. But, I mean, the the comedians that I, I've watched, like, I don't see them anymore. And it's probably because they've hurt too many people's feelings. It's like, well, that they're not talking to you, unfortunately. They're talking to the audience. And some people that are, are buying the ticket... And a comedian's like, well, it sucks for you. You already paid. So. <laughs> well, like, so uh, let me ask you this. Like, obviously, it's a bad thing to be holding comedians accountable for their jokes like that's this. That's their profession. They're trying yeah. to make the audience laugh by whatever means necessary. Yeah, like, and, do do and they mean anything? Maybe. Maybe not. But that's not for us to really... We paid yeah. to watch comedy. We didn't pay to get hurt about something. So that being said... To me and you, it's a general consensus that it's silly that comedians should be censored in any way. Yeah. Um, but to other people, I mean, there's but to the, other people, the first right, the first. But to other people, <laughs> that's not the case. Yeah, I mean, because and and that's not something I'm justifying. That's something I agree with. But what are the what are the think about it? The pros of maybe, if any, what are the pros of censoring comedians? Are there any? I mean, I'm very biased, so it's going to be hard for me to find it. But, I mean, maybe just to adhere to everyone's wants and needs. But it's also, it doesn't seem like they signed up to have that position of having to right. adhere to the whole audience. They're there to make people laugh. It, and the people is not a singular, it's a plural people. Like, the audience laugh. And right. of course, some that's of the a very good point. That's a very good point. Some may be silent, but they made someone laugh on that joke. Cancel culture is not always about. Or cancel culture seems to always kind of be about the the me, the me, yeah, and yeah. I am offended and I am mad. How how would how dare you do this to me? Versus yeah. when you buy a ticket to a comedy show, they're gonna have to start putting disclaimers yeah. on the back of the ticket, like they do at a baseball game, where it says, you know, if you throw the fucking ball back, you're gonna be escorted out of the goddamn stadium. Yeah. <laughs> and it's stupid because also most of these people that are getting heard about it, the comedian has no clue who that person is. Like, they don't know their background, anything like that. So, like, it's definitely not audience towards them, that joke. And so there's no sense in taking heart to it because they, it's not like they were pointing at him and being like, oh, like, screw you, you got a ginger beard or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're saying jokes for the general people around. They're not looking at, I mean, occasionally some will call people out but it's also like most of those are like those small comedy shows where it's the audience is involved with the comedian so it, i guess it just depends there's one comedian i don't know his name he's uh a pretty boy what i know him as oh i know exactly california. who you're fucking talking about he's from california dude he's a the toxic dude. ass guy that always talks about like fucking and i say toxic i mean like shit i mean He's mostly talking to females in the audience. Yeah. Like, yeah. But it doesn't help if we don't know his name. Oh, I'm I'm so bad. I don't even know. Like I you had to tell me Leo Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> right, that's true, that's true, that's true. I, I don't know. I, I I feel guilty for this one. I feel like I should I should know that one, but I, I could never guess this. I don't even think I, I've seen videos on him. And he's funny. He's funny, but he is that person that will actually call someone out in the audience and that at that point it's kind of I can see someone being like you're picking on me kind of thing but it's still it's it's their job like I I install window blinds like if I install it a certain way it's because that's the way I was taught it's right the same thing with comedians if they're telling a joke a certain way it's because that's the way they find comedy out of well them. that's most comedians are self-taught so I mean so that's that's the way they were taught. <laughs> so my, that's how they teach themselves, things. you know? <laughs> like, they don't know anything else at that point. Comedy is very self-taught. It's like, uh, 
your relationship with your comedy, with your stand-up, with how you write, what the jokes you tell are entirely... Your audience. <laughs> like, it's entirely a relationship between you and yourself, and that's between nobody else. You oh, know, yeah. but granted, I'm telling you fucking jokes, but that's what it is at the end of the day. It's a joke. It's a fucking joke. No one... He's not saying anything serious, and if he is, like, it's not supposed to be, and whether you take it serious or not, that's on you, but trying to cancel someone's show just because they said a joke but well, also like little... you gotta think about it this way Dane like it comes into major consideration of broadening audience uh, comedians have now been given the opportunity to entirely broaden how they broadcast who they see yeah. how fast they find followers how fast they find shows how fast they fill up their fucking schedule because of this social media age yeah you know, and back before this, it was all word of mouth. Mm -hmm. So everything they would do was because somebody said they were good. Somebody heard they were good. And that's that you know? friend group that you have. Or that that's just that, that, that's that, that's that recommendation from somebody. That's that, yeah. this person is good. And now we only yeah, have the recommendation of an algorithm. Yeah. You know, it's not somebody's character standing behind the recommendation. It's saying, like, a character fucking recommendation. If, I, if you were to be like, dude, this comedian is so great. I know you have stand-up values. I know you're a great dude. I genuinely fuck with you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I'm going to base your recommendation off those values that you withhold. Yeah. Or uphold, you know? All and, of a sudden, dark humor. No. <laughs> <laughs> and, but that being said, now, all was, now the only recommendation that we see is from AI. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? So it, it alters... Your perception of yes, it. Yes, their know? algorithm instead of your own, basing it off of what you what you know. No, it's it's that algorithm is not based off morals. It's not based off any form of like. It's it is yes, no, it's yes, it's based off morals, but it's not it's not based off human interaction. It's not based off. I have known this guy for years. I have conversated with this guy this many times, and I have like-minded interest with this person, yeah. so his recommendation means something to me. Now, it's just a blind recommendation based off what you click on. Yeah. Like, oh, they watched this dog video so many times. <laughs> well, here's this other dog video, whatever. <laughs> Sadly, that's my the videos I watch now. So. <laughs> Do you have any recommendations whatsoever? I know you said you're terrible with names, but it's not something that, like being good at names has to affect, you know, if somebody really stands out to you, could you put out anybody that you really could, could shout out as far as famous, little, small, huge, doesn't matter, man. They could be the biggest fucking, they could be Joe Rogan or they could be fucking, uh, Theo Von, Theo Von's little brother. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think of his name. Um, cause I watched him on Netflix a couple times. Uh, Bo Burnham's a good one. He's kind of a, a goofy, just... Dude, dude. you like Bo Burnham? Yeah. He's Brother. He's a goofy, goofy dude. So, speaking of Bo Burnham, the reason this podcast is here right now is because of Bo Burnham. No way. Uh-huh. Hey, so, a little about? story. My brother, um, huge... Huge uh, music fan. He used to work for Universal Music for Vimeo, watching YouTube all day for copyright and stuff over in Hollywood. Okay. Um, so he's just a big fan of music. Always had very similar music taste as I, and you know it's um, something that when he recommends a song, I highly, I highly uh, take note or take into consideration what he's playing. Uh, and so when he came out to visit, he played the song for me that was uh, by Bo Burnham. Um, World on Fire. Uh, Eyes on Me. Okay, no. <laughs> no, but it's a serious music. Oh, really? Dude, and it's so freaking good. It is so freaking good. No like, would have thought, because I know it's songs bro, because and they're all just like, they're jokes. That's what I said, too. dude. No, literally, so my brother plays this song and tells me, because he, like, my brother is like, he's also like trying to be a life coach. He's very serious about oh. um, his aspirations and his goals, and he's just, he takes his shit fucking real, you know? And this song also had like a two minute speech in it not a two minute like a one minute speech and like towards the end of the song that kind of explained where the song came from and also how Bo Berman has had a lack of performance in his eyes like he said that he hadn't been performing anywhere and that's because he was getting panic attacks on stage um, hmm. and 
these panic attacks were really affecting him and it got to a point where he was like dude I, I need to perform I'm not performing anymore and he had like a self-realization right COVID hit during the time of self-realization he's like I need to go out and perform he's like well fuck I can't yep they right? ain't gonna have no audience <laughs> and this story was throughout this song and it's fucking he's he, the song goes get your fucking hands up eyes on me get your fucking eyes on me like you know like I need to perform you know it was yeah. the, the idea behind the song and he explains that idea in his little speech or whatever and so now I have that song without the speech as like my number one fucking song I listen to right now and every time I listen to it it's just like you need to get out there and perform it's you know you need to figure that out you need to make that part happen of you, that part of you happen mm-hmm. you know I mean life's short spend it while you can and it like it to me, it kind of went hand in hand with like, I'm not performing for people. Like, I'm not out here to get followers. I'm not out here for the, I'm not here to make money. I'm not here for any of that. I'm not here for the clout. It's for you. But it's came with it. You know, that's been something that comes along with being passionate about something. I mean, it's just being yourself. You're going to, you, people that are like minded like you are going to, it's a domino effect. Yeah. Afterwards, they're like, you know what? Like, I like this because he's real. And he, he's talking yeah. about this or this or this. Or he, he has people like me that are novices on this that he's going to bring <laughs> on and just let him, let him try it out. So, you know, it, I mean, that's something you're passionate about also, which is cool. And people are brought, brought in by that also. Something that they can see like, wow, this is something... He really enjoys, and this is something that that takes your mind off everyday life. I mean, everyone's got their their thing. Mine's been volleyball or sports or something like that. It just kind of gives you that that free lapse of mind from wow, I just had a twelve hour work day, and I I was putting up a drapery that I've never put up before. <laughs> that was my day to day. My boss tells me, hey, by the way never done this before but try it out and i was like all right i'll send it ended up killing the job but it's like that's when you say i got youtube don't i yeah but I, i'm at some random person's house i ain't I'm you know how many times YouTube, i have like, hey just don't do it in front of them just don't do it in front of them but you know how many times i dead ass have done that oh I'm, as a professional like as a contractor as somebody who walks in your house and says i can do it yeah Gives you a prize, sells you with complete conviction on the fact that I know how to do it. Goes home and YouTube's the fuck up how to do it. That's what they call fake it till you make it. No, right? that's what you call being a fucking contractor <laughs> or a mechanic. Bro, when I was in mechanic school, that is what my fucking professor taught me. He said, YouTube's your best friend. He was like, dude, you think we fucking know all this shit off the top of our head, bro? We go look it up. Like every single fucking car, every single fucking part, we don't know all this shit. You you ain't got wandering eyes looking over you. (laughs) You want to let me guide you, my brother? uh, I'll take a baby hit, but you about to see me shut up. Yeah, that's a so. (laughs) I was about to say this is a cigar. This ain't. Yeah, that's a that's an actual weed cigar. Like an actual like before on the show, we used to smoke cigars all the time. That is an actual cigar full of weed. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in Colorado now, and it's completely legal. Legal. For years now. Legal. Well, was, legal to do this. in Seattle. And yeah. now I can say it, because you, you ain't going to come after me, FCC, fuck all, you ain't going to do shit, you can't. I was smoking weed as a motherfucker in Idaho on this show. Now I'm not, now I can. <coughs> puff Puff legal. Pass is now a regulation in Colorado. <sighs> so, so, what is decriminalized mean? It means on a federal scale. I mean, you can still get fined by it, but you won't see jail time. So, mushrooms being decriminalized recently, what does that mean? If you get caught with mushrooms, you can get a hefty fine from it just to try to get you away from it. But they can't Especially if they, they can't can put you in jail. You're, they you're like distributing you or something like that. Yeah. You know, intent oh, to I mean, It's criminal a charge. You'll get absolutely a criminal charge if you're... I'm, I'm chilling. For now, I appreciate you, bro. <laughs> you all good. You all good. I'm trying to be a part of this conversation instead of like looking at it, waiting for the paint to dry. That's already dried on the wall or some shit. Bro, that <laughs> happened to me when I was podcasting with P.D. Torres, man. Me and him. It was a bummer that I only got 20 minutes of that show. 
on air, but I mean, at the end of the day, when you look at it circumstantially, he was leaving for the airport in like 20 minutes, bro. Oh, so you, y'all were power chiefing. Well, they like, know, like, we... I think what happened is I got a brand new nail and, like, upgraded my dab rig the oh, night before like, he was supposed to late. leave. <laughs> and so, like, we just took a bunch of dabs. We're like, dude, we're not touching that fucking mic set up tonight. Like, not even... I didn't have nothing set up, too. That's why. Like, now that it's all set up and shit, it's kind of plug and play for, like, the next show. I can just, like... 10, 20, 30 minutes of setup, you know, but the first yeah. initial show, when you have a podcast in two years, dude, like, I had to dig shit up out of the fucking boxes of boxes of boxes of the archives of my garage. You have to, I, I didn't even know you had to set stuff. I mean, when you watch podcasts, you don't see that background, like, behind the scenes stuff. Like, what do you have to do to set it up? Oh, my gosh. Okay, so, I use... Um, I use a very good computer for this. Like, I originally I built my computer for podcasting, and then I kind of got into gaming a little bit. Um, but the computer I have is meant to, to be able to handle all this power and processing and rendering. Yeah. Um, and so being a video podcast um, really, really, really steps up the level of difficulty. Let me get one of those. Thank you. Uh, it really steps up the level of difficulty because, like, can you open that? <laughs> child safe. <laughs> I'm sorry, I should have taken it off for you. <laughs> uh, because the fact of the matter is, bro, like, anybody, not anybody, but a lot of people can record audio. Uh, a lot of people can record a YouTube with a camera. Uh, combining high quality analog audio. And converting it into a digital platform, combining it with video, all at the same time, not doing any fucking editing. The editing I do is all very basic. I do, this is all a live run, yeah. you know, so it's all one run. I do this all in one fucking recording. Ain't no outtakes. I'm no, sure. and I mean, there's been outtakes. There's been some times where I have to take some stuff out, you know. Like censorship. <laughs> Usually it's because I forgot that we're still recording and I posted it and I say something dumb at the end of the episode that got on the air kind oh, of thing because yeah. I didn't know I was still live. But the process is very much the sound check. Like, I have to really make sure that the audio is the most number one important thing in my eyes. You're because just out like pencils. Paper oh, I <laughs> sing into this motherfucker. I make weird ADHD noises. I go bop, boop, beep, boop, bop, boop. And I fucking do full song. I do that's a karaoke show. Though, so. Nah, dude. Like, that's that's just me, man. I, I go full ADHD into this mic before you get here, you know? Oh, yeah. But you know what you're listening for. So you, you it's like an actual test. It's not like, for example, I didn't have time to do that for Petey's episode. And I lost about 45 minutes of footage. Yeah, because the robot sound. You yeah, and it, it literally yeah. sounded like, and it was really fucking annoying, dude. It was hard to, hard to listen to. That's a big part to cut out, also. <laughs> That's the thing. You start if you're going to podcast, in my opinion, the most important thing that you should fucking pay attention to is your audio quality, everybody. Audio quality. Because what is a podcast? It's a fucking radio show. It's an audio show, okay? Nobody gives a fuck about what you have to say, dude. Period. Nobody fucking cares about what you're talking about, what you have to say, why you're saying it. But it better sound fucking good, okay? Yeah. It better sound fucking good because I tell you what, you could be talking literally like the president of the United States of America with complete conviction, intelligence, mm -hmm. and... Absolutely kill whatever speech you're fucking doing. But if it sounds like shit, and you can't even understand what the fuck you're saying because the audio is shit, none of that conversation or that speech matters. Yeah. It's like hearing the, the sound when you're saying your yeah, F words. And, and it's like instantly that's all your brain is People collecting. have the attention span of a squirrel when listening to a podcast. Oh, mine's a goldfish. You're yeah, and squirrel. if there's anything Someday. disruptive, there's anything fucking... Sensory, uh, what's it? Sensory, uh, triggering or triggering. Yeah, sensory provoking. Um, you're not gonna want to fucking continue. You're immediately gonna switch to another show, turn it off, not listen again. Yeah, yeah, you know, and understanding those 
aspects make the difference between a good host and a bad one. Uh, and that's not something that I immediately figured out by any means. Like that's something that after 500 hours of recording, 500 hours of being on the fucking mic, really putting in fucking time, mm-hmm. editing, losing shows, yeah, losing people's fucking hard time, bro. Like, yeah, yeah you're at my house drinking there. beer and shit, but dude, there's been people who come on this show that I don't know on a personal level. Yeah. That it's I like just invite them the over yeah. for the show. And it's very professional. I've had I've had people on this podcast that just came up over to promote their um brand to just do a fucking podcast about selling houses. Oh wow. Yeah, they came on for their company and just promoted their fucking um uh real estate business, the two of them. All the blokes in New Zealand are like... No, oh, yeah, literally. At least, uh, it's a great podcast. It's on the show. It's like, I think, number five or so. Um, oh, wow. And they came on and they talked about the Boise market. And they talked about buying a house in Boise, being a first-time home buyer. Selling yourself. And that was just all on this yeah, show. Yeah. You know? And and that's that kind, of what, that kind of brings us back to the variety of what this show is. Because, you know, it's not the Casey Young show. It's not. Never has been. Never will be. Do you have a name for it? The Young Blood Podcast, brother. You already said that. You're right. I feel embarrassed that you didn't know that. Uh, that you're you, know. you also like spelled it out completely for. Dude, do you not know? <laughs> I'm just <it's> right <laughs> over my head. That was not, not there. Do you not know how to spell? I thought you were pretty. You're a pretty intelligent guy. I used to. Do you see where that light went? A book? couple concussions. I mean, rugby will do that to you. Yeah. No, actually, it's it's less injuries. Then I'm looking. Oh, here it is. I got it. Okay. It's less injuries than cheerleading. Fun fact. It's Rugby is less injuries than cheerleading. No way. That tackling form. Also, picture football. You got a helmet on. You got pads on. You're thinking, oh, I'm I'm blowing through whoever's in front of me, like completely <sighs> shoulder head charge whatever. You think you're invis- invincible, but as soon as you take that padding off. <sighs> You'll see a lot of football players don't want to transition to rugby because they're scared to take their pads off because they think we hit the same way. When we hit our... Completely different. I mean, there's a wrap-up formulated tackle. To get back up on your feet quicker than any... Like, be the first one on your feet. You're not trying to... You're not trying to inflict damage. (laughs) Well, it's just... (laughs) To yourself. It's a mutual respect to know, like, it's our bodies on the line. Like, I don't have any padding. I don't have a helmet. And if we do, they're called scrum caps and they're little foam pads. Like, that's it. I had to wear one because of my cauliflower ear. It wasn't even because of a concussion or anything. Did and you get rid of your cauliflower ear or do you still have it? Uh, left side, I got taken out when my wisdom teeth were taken out. Right side, it happened in college and I was just, we tried to. <laughs> I, no, right, I had is, cauliflower ear too. I've had, it too. I, had a, a I had a surgery to remove it. We, so I wasn't that smart. I didn't think, oh, we got to get a syringe and, like, suck it out. Yeah. I had me and my college roommate, his name is Chase, uh, we're sitting, he's heating up a thumbtack with a a lighter, (laughs) thumbtack, and he's stabbing my ear repetitively in different spots and then squeezing it like a pimple, trying to get the calcium buildup out. (laughs) Did not work, so don't try it at home. Like, (laughs) absolutely won't work. Syringe is the only way. And this one, it was already hardened. But uh, he, th- I got it surgically taken out, so it wasn't a problem. But. So the way they did mine was they drained it, um, and then they sewed two fucking circular gauze rolls to my ear. Oh, no. They sewed it to my ear for weeks. That's like putting a cone on a dog. That's that's too much. No, many. like dead ass, dude. <laughs> so they took, they rolled a, a fucking piece of gauze, two of them, put one on each side of the fold of my ear, and then sewed it through my ear. Yeah. And sewed the two pieces of gauze to the ear. Like, like a fucking, sa- like sandwiched it, like a hot dog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I had these two, like, fucking rolls of gauze, of, like, sewed in my ear for, like, two fucking weeks, dude. I That's came so back in my, dude, look, look at that shit. Fucking, can't even tell I had cough fire. Yeah. But, oh, no, there's no more. Dude, they did my great. <laughs> they did fucking great. Shout out to that doctor. Well, he's gonna listen to this. That just that sounds like <laughs> a vet. That wasn't a doctor. He's like, tell your mom, don't let him scratch it for at least two weeks. And <laughs> bro, I had the worst undiagnosed ADHD as a child. It was so bad. I don't know how. Oh, I do know how. Um, that generation of parents didn't 
know about ADHD yet, but... Yeah, it's just like, ah, oh, you're fine. You're just a little more energetic. Dude, I, from <laughs> grade one until the time I was fucking a senior in high school, every report card I ever had said talks too much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. talks too much, won't shut up, won't pay attention. I'm like, you guys, dude, they got me tested for dyslexia. Lysdexia? Dyslexia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm late. I saw them gears turn. <laughs> you had it. I was like, did I say it right? <laughs> wait, 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 who's wrong here? <laughs> Dude, shout out to Purple Lotus, bro. These um cigar molds. Intense. Dude, they, this Y'all saw the difference that we smoked, and mine was a couple puffs. We're on the same level right now. He's probably still lower than me. My cigar that I'm smoking right now has lasted probably this is on the second hour or so of smoking it. It was originally that big. And oh, I believe it. Yeah, they had so the way they rolled is they put a fucking a stick in the, in the middle, middle for, like, and then and then they put it in a mold and it sits overnight and cures into that shape and then you pull the fucking bamboo rod or stick out or whatever and, and it leaves that the airflow hole. Really? Don't buy them at the dispensary, though. They have these. They, um, oh, by far. Like So at the dispo I go to, uh, I was going to buy one of them because my buddy was in town. I was going to be a special occasion, like Colorado smoke yeah. down sesh, you know. And the guy that worked at the dispo was like, bro, because I was kind of talking shit on the ones that they sell. I was like, dude, I bought these before. They're 60 bucks. They're kind of harsh. They're really not worth the hype. He's like, bro, do you want me to just fucking make you one? I have to mold in my house. I was like, what? And he's like, bro, yeah, buy like a quarter of weed and two ounces or two two grams of wax. I'll make you a couple of infused cigars, right? And he fucking makes them for me, dude. And they're ten times better. I I wouldn't be surprised. They're they're the ones to, you could buy. They're thinking bulk, not. I do need a fucking torch lighter though. Hey, that, this is your area. This is your area. It's over yonder. I see some gold, big torch looking thing. So, I'm. Dude, this is also the first. Called it. Podcast we can take tabs on, bro. This is the first one? Well, is this your first Colorado podcast? Second. Second? Yeah, I would say this is the first um, full production podcast. For Colorado, the last one was very much rushed. 20 minute show. Only got tw- uh, after post production and everything, 19 minutes got on air. And most of my podcasts average about an hour to two hours. Okay. You know, so I mean, it's. Hey, we're in the same boat. A lot different reason, though. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you're, uh, you're working for a blind company out in Denver. How's that? It's off and on. It's an in- interesting industry. I picture it kind of like real estate. You got a lot of highs and lows in the industry. But I mean, I, I do side jobs. I do everything I can just because I'm a busybody. And I want want to be as useful as possible. Like, right. At least like I may not be making the money, but we need our dishwasher fixed. Don't need some maintenance guy coming in because I already know how to fix it or some something. Right, like right, like, right. Oh, we're trying to re revamp our home. I'll knock out this wall, make the kitchen bigger because I already know how to plaster a drywall. Like trying to help in in ways that are kind of like day by day. Right, thing. right. Like oh my my faucet's leaking, something like that. Oh, easy fix. Right. Or my my washing machine is shaking and making a bunch of noise. Oh, pop the cap off, tighten the bolts underneath, you're set. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many things that it can be useful for and like I I'm not in it for the money, I'm in it for the experience. I feel like just like there you go. figuring out what kind of paints to use for what ty- types of houses, like how to install this, 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 like be able to renovate because everyone's going to be in some home some type of way renters love seeing it oh if we have a problem he's gonna fix it because he's bored and it seems exciting <laughs> or and it's just like picking up those skills and tasks even home buyer like oh i don't have to pay 200 dollars extra for a maintenance fee right right because I, i'm doing it myself like all i'm buying is the parts it's the same with like 
car stuff, I know minimal about. I'm not a mechanic at, by any means, but even like figuring out how to change your oil. So, so easy. But you'll get charged so much money. I mean, oil filter plus, I mean, if you get an air filter, change them out at the same time. Plus, all you need is a, a bucket drain for the oil so you're not making a big mess or leaking it on your driveway or something. Right. Like, the parts, one one of them, the bucket drain, you can reuse over and over if you dump the oil at, like, uh, Ace Hardware or something like that. Um, and you don't have to pay maintenance fees. Like, it's just, I'm trying to think logical on, right. like, the way I go about it because... I went to college for zoology. Would have loved. <laughs> oh, that would have been such a fun job. And it's also like 20K a year. Or I could make higher amounts, but I'm also learning skills because I'm not going to be dealing with tigers anytime soon. Or right, I'm not going to be right. dealing with an elephant having something in its foot. Or like how to enrich an animal that is completely exotic. Like <laughs> Right, right. See, I went to probably one of the best classes i took was uh heavy duty diesel uh i got in high school i got certified in brakes and in doing oil changes by the time i was 17 (laughs) certified fucking i I have two certifications literally fucking printed out fucking valvoline oil certification valvoline brake certification we had ceramics like (laughs) i took dude i actually won second place in the fucking art show for ceramics Oh, I could never. I am very surprisingly good at um, sculpting. Hey, Sculpting's my shit. There's artistic and then autistic. There's <laughs> difference, <laughs> difference there. You know, stick figures, he's thinking of Mona Lisa's. And like, then there's Asperger's. That's no more. <laughs> <laughs> Could be a mixture of Parkinson's, you know. <laughs> well, no, no. Just Dr. Asperger's was a Nazi, so that's no longer... <laughs> Fair enough. You yeah, didn't so know that? I was a history major, too. I so from what that. I've so what I have uh, collected is not much, but that's why Asperger's is no longer a thing, because cancel culture got to Dr. Asperger's for a fair reason, but I mean, come on. Dude, I, I loved history. I'm not a history major. I went to college for history while I was playing rugby. Dumb decisions, chose rugby above college, but... <laughs> chose rugby <laughs> above college. Yeah, I should have known that. Uh, especially World War II history, my 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 kind of ordeal. Again, dude, bro, I thought the bladder of a fucking twelve year old girl. I also had like six- pick me for road trips. Hundred percent. I broke the seal. I fucked up. Yeah, that's why you just ignore it. Ignore it until it's unignorable. But then you talk too fast. That is true. Hey, you play <laughs> sports better, though. There's a lot more ur- urgency on the courts. Pitches, whatever you're playing on. See, if that was you really good... Too? Yeah, I have two cats. I have a dog. I have a fish tank. A saltwater fish tank, actually. Come to the zoo. It's over here in Colorado Springs, right in this general area. Dude, the Colorado Springs Zoo, Cheyenne Mountain Zoo, is one of the number favorite. one zoo. Not number one, but it is top ten in the United oh, States. Yeah. It actually is. Like, it is fucking tight. And also, have you been to the Denver Aquarium? I have. Dude, I've it's so all. fucking cool. There's a straight-up tiger exhibit. Yeah, out of nowhere. I don't, right next to the piranhas. Piranhas are the best exhibit by far. Don't follow me on this, but they serve chicken at the place, uh, the the restaurant there. You can sneak some in the piranha area. It's a it's a show. I didn't piranha feeding at the aquarium. That it's not allowed. Completely not allowed. No, (laughs) I snuck it in a napkin and took a video. (laughs) Oh my god! I was was completely on another page. Oh my god! No, mine was like definitely hoodlum type stuff. But um, no, fun fact though, Shine Mountain Zoo, one of the only places that is a giraffe breeding zoo, and the reason for that, pretty much. Actually, all of the giraffes that are in there are from highland locations in Africa. And so they're used to our climate. 
nor climate only. So if you took them to a California zoo, or you thinking like, oh, like Arizona, we have the desert, super hot climate. No, they're actually used to pretty cold weather. Oh, well, I mean, I guess Africa does get pretty cold at night. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, so does the the most of the deserts around the world. It's just a nighttime thing. Absent of sun, of course, it's going to cool down. It's just by the extent. Do you know Idaho has crocodiles? I had no clue. Do no. they have now I crocodiles? Know. You shouldn't have told me that. I went to Florida and I was me and my dad were kayaking on a river trying to find crocodiles. Well, alligators, because I don't think there's any crocs in Florida. Dude, actually, even scarier. Idaho has sharks, bro. Oh, hell no. You ever heard of salmon sharks? No. Pull out your phone. Look up. Look up the photo of a salmon shark. Also, the cat's all over the keyboard. It's okay. I didn't know if that did anything, but I can't hear myself on my headphones anymore. Oh, you can't hear yourself on your headphones? Hello. Um, yeah, still not. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> the volume on Technical difficulties. Of salmon the shark, podcast. you said? <laughs> hey, first time. Yeah, no, first salmon time. shark. Look it up. It is fucked up. It is absolutely fucked up. God, cats are the worst animals in the fucking world. <laughs> As, as you have two of them? <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm a dog-only guy. I Complete savages convert. those fucking animals are. Hey, you, you picture this big guy right here. He's going to greet you with a happy smile every time you come in the house. That cat is going to look at you like you're a stranger in your own damn home. Not, not the fucking... It depends. It depends. Not the orange cat. All right, it's man. Happy cat. I do know that. Salute, brother. Hey, Here's cool a, a Jameson shot. Throw her back. So your first experience podcasting, how's it been? Honestly, it seems like hard. You think like it's all scripted or anything like that. But like once know. you get, it's pretty much a conversation. Yep. Like you, uh, occasionally you notice the camera, but it's it's mostly like, hey, we just chatting. Like we could be at a bar right now having the same conversation without the shout out. So that's right. weird at a bar. But Oh, the cat almost did do some damage. Almost. Hey. It said, uh, do you want to delete camera one? On the <laughs> no, I don't want to delete camera one. My cat's trying to be the new producer. Is this show. camera one? Yeah, that's camera one right that's here. That's bad angle. Delete it. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then this right here is camera two. I used to have four cameras total. They look like baby great whites. Sorry, back to the same and short. Mm. <laughs> yes. I just looked down. That looks exactly like a... a so those, uh, they're not fresh water. Baby great white. Right, let's see. We're on this one. Just like a. That's a, a salmon shark. For those of like you on YouTube. Pit bull's eyes with a, a great white's everything else. Yeah, so they're called salmon sharks. I don't know if it's because they eat salmon or if they look like a cross of a salmon and a shark. Probably because they eat salmon. It might be. Salmon, I feel like, don't look like. So I mean, now look up on your phone um, Salmon Shark, I know. But not photos. Look up uh, news articles. News articles. Just, no, just look up Salmon Shark, Idaho. And then go to all, not images. Salmon Shark suddenly appears from the shores of Salmon River. Yep, right there. That first one. The Salmon Watch River. Watch the video? No, just read the article. Okay. That's ABC for Utah. Shout out. Sponsor me. <laughs> <laughs> I... One of my oh, favorite podcasts that I've done uh, was with my buddy Dusty, uh, Dustin Isaac. He's a, the lead singer for the Tumbleweeds of Boise, Idaho. Phenomenal country band. Uh, this guy came on the podcast and just blasted fucking acoustic guitar and absolutely killed some, some good old country classics. So if you ever get the chance, take a couple minutes and uh, listen to that one. I think uh, I posted a... Three episodes ago, episode number 39, where it's just all the music from him, too, so you don't got to deal with all the chit-chat. It's great music. Fair enough, yeah. This all is right. the chit-chat episode. All right. So Every says, episode, usually. Salmon River, also known as the River of No Return, is a freshwater river that runs in central and eastern Idaho. I feel like this is just a background. Uh, no sharks have been observed swimming up uh, our ladders recently. I don't know how they got to ladders, but 
I guess. Ladders are, uh, so when you're running, so when a river's going downward uh, on a downward slope and salmon swim up it, um, when the water kind of trickles downwards in a point where you cannot swim up it and you have to jump it, yeah, it's called a ladder. Because they're jumping up it, kind of like a ladder. They're hitting like the river. This is why they're called salmon sharks, because they can do what like salmon do. I <laughs> guess, yeah, no, dude, and that's so they the can jump thing. up rivers. So they're freshwater and saltwater. Or? I already have a problem swimming in Lucky Peak Reservoir because Boise is a, is a sporting town. So there's nothing but rock climbing, snowboarding, skiing, fucking boating, shit to do, right? And so there's a huge reservoir right out right outside of the town. Yeah. Uh, and it's very deep. It's a very deep reservoir. You can fucking uh, fish for salmon and uh, it's, I think it's um, uh, pike. It's not pike. Starts with a K. Carp. No, it's a kind of salmon that starts with a K. Does carp start with a K or a C? Uh, oh, that's a C. That's a C. Uh, no, it's a kind of salmon that starts with a K, like kokanee or some shit. Um, my fisherman helped me out here, but I don't have any who watch the show right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um. We got well, rainbow trout here, so I haven't been fishing in Colorado at all, uh, and I'm excited. To you ain't do gonna, so. You're not gonna get anything big, but I mean, rainbow trout, they're they're good to eat. Salt, Fair salt, <laughs> Colorado fishing. Come out here, <laughs> dude. No, I, Idaho's got some fucking phenomenal fishing. I mean, it's it. You you can go out there and you can straight fish for fucking sturgeon, dude. Yeah, that's wild. Like that's prehistoric sized sturgeon that you're, so you're not allowed to pull them out of the water, right? So you have to dehook them in the water, but they'll still be like a six foot fucking fish, seven foot foot. They, like uh, fucking prehistoric sturgeon, dude. Yeah, huge. Oh, they're protective fish. species. Yeah, so you can't pull them out of the water or eat them or nothing, but you yeah. can fish for them. I mean, they can go and lock you up if you accidentally catch the wrong fish. Like, that's like uh, <laughs> they will find you if you take um, it out of the water. But... Inappropriate uh, steps and precautions, and don't follow the law. Like the, the dude, game wardens in Idaho don't fuck around. I, I personally have been stopped by game warden fishing in Idaho like four times. Yeah, but what game warden is going to see you have a fish in the water? Bro, I've personally been stopped by a game warden in the middle of nowhere, bro. They come up out of nowhere, out of the bushes, like, what's up? You got your game fucking, you got your fishing pass, homie? And I'm like, what How the? long are you watching us? No, like, literally, like, <laughs> you don't see their truck, you don't see nothing, and they just, like, all of a sudden, there's a homie with a big fucking mustache, and it's just like, what's up? Doesn't introduce himself, doesn't say anything, just walks right up to you. Come here often? <laughs> no, literally, that kind of vibe, bro. They come up very fucking straight up, walking right to you, and you know what the fucking guy is. You're like, that's a fucking game. God damn it, you know, because usually you have your you have your fishing license on you, you know, but I've been fishing a couple times in Idaho without it. Don't get me wrong. It's always catch and release. I don't oh. ever keep nothing, but I mean, I'll go, I'll go fishing and maybe not buy the day pass that day sometimes. So, you know, you're always <laughs> test. You know, you're always like keeping an eye out for the it. game or, you know, if you're doing something stupid like that. And like I said, I don't poach. I've never poached. I'm not a big I'm not. No, don't do that. But I have fished without my fishing license once or twice in my youth. Okay, don't, <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> don't get me wrong. You know, I did have a fishing pole and we were camping and there was a creek, right? Cast a few lines. Was just, I wrong? Yes, and I'm aware of that now that I'm an adult. Unexpected. <laughs> you just, you, it was expected. I knew what I was doing. Oh, I started, I'm trying to back you up here. <laughs> nah, man, there's, no, there's no, no point of backing up accountability. Fair enough. Fair just got to be accountable. I was wrong, but, you know, now that I'm older, smarter, and... Diligent. Oh, fish are safe around. I don't like seafood. Really? Yeah, so I'm always catch and release. I'm like, hey, you lost it in the genetic battle, but, you know, uh, karma's not getting you yet. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I, I, fishing I love, enjoy, but I, I just, I mean, maybe a, a very well-made cedar plank salmon. But okay, fair enough. We don't have salmon out here. You so can't go wrong with a cedar plank. Let me rephrase. Colorado fish are safe. <laughs> <laughs> right on. All right, Dane. So, this has been your first podcast ever. We have hit over one hour and 49 minutes, minus about probably 20 minutes of um, banter and bullshit that you didn't know we were recording. Uh, this room could be a time warp. This room could be... 
very uncomfortable for some. It has been. There's been a couple episodes that were not. Someone sitting in the back, like. There's there <laughs> out of all of the podcasts I've done, only one of them uh, did not get posted, uh, and I really feel. <laughs> no, <one>. yeah. <laughs> no. I really feel like that one was an anomaly. You know, like it's pretty hard to not have a genuine conversation with somebody. Yeah, unless you're so fixated on the camera. I feel like Dude, that's not even that, changes. man. Like the one bad conversation that I had wasn't anything close to somebody being fixated on the camera. I think one word answers. Like, <sighs> do you like I remember what it was. Is I even that day I had my producer there, Cam Camden, uh, at the time, and he was he was running the cameras and everything, so I could straight just focus on conversating with the person. Yeah, yeah. And I'm very good at conversating. I have never had a problem getting somebody to talk you know it's that yeah i've stuff. never had yeah. an issue with it but this person strangers so often <laughs> i could like i'd be like so for example i would completely build a question to have an answer to be flawless to the point where like it would have something interesting to say yeah you, you we're know gonna force this out of yeah you so i'd be like games. and the girl and so ironically the girl was a stripper that i was uh i hope she's not listening to this uh, the girl was a stripper that i was uh interviewing and she just was the most boring fucking person on the show she's not a boring person but once she got behind the mic it's just like it's a camera it was like, dude <laughs> the brain the brain went blank for this poor person and literally i'd ask a question structured so well like so in this many years of dancing, uh, give me an example of a time that somebody did this to you or uh, you did this to somebody that you really felt was impactful to you and uh, you have a story for me that you can uh, build off of that on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I do have one of those. I'd be like, they'd be like, yes. <laughs> and I'd be like, dude, fuck. And then I'd look at my producer and be like, and then he'd ask a question. <laughs> I even had a mic for him that day. I set one up. I was like, fuck it, dude. I'm going to throw one in on you. And he, like, Joe Rogan style or Jamie would pop in. You know, he'd be like, blah, 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 blah. really? So that's what you have to say about that. Fuck. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> they, literally, yeah. <laughs> so, and with that, it's been, it's been such an awesome journey, dude. This Young Blood podcast, like I said, it's not Casey Young's show. It's not, it's, it's hosted by me. Okay, cool. I don't matter. The people who come on the show, the people who spend their time to put themselves out there and actually do it and come out here and take it seriously. It's it's what this show is. Yeah, variety. Yeah, it's it's giving people in New Zealand, in Africa, in England a little taste of what Colorado's like, a little taste of what Idaho's like. Surprise, you were right. <laughs> we're weird. <laughs> I thought there'd be more hippies here, but I moved to Colorado Springs, and it's <laughs> Republican as fuck. Uh, I don't mind it. <laughs> Dude, that's actually that brings me to a point. Uh, so, Trump's mugshot. What do you think about it? I didn't even know he had a mugshot. Really? I stopped, stopped watching the news. It was just, it's it's... All depressing stuff. It's like, it's not constructive. I'm already enough. depressed as it is. What's going to make it worse? Come on. I mean, yeah. I should probably watch, like, the the political side of it, just so I know what's going on. But at this point, it's like, oh, another kid got hit by a car and died. <laughs> or Jacob didn't win his battle against leukemia. And you're right. Like, no, well, for sure. This has never been sucks. a show of politics, either. So yeah. don't worry. It's never been one of... Um, News, it's never been one of politics, never been one of facts or reason. It's just been one of banter. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Whatever comes to mind. Pretty much. And it's done well with that with that premise so far. And like originally um the theme of the show was do as the locals do. I like that. You know, that's kind of what I've built off. That's where every episode and every interview is um coming from. It's it's do as the locals do, man. It's like we're out here to Interview people, experience people, get a taste of something you've never heard, experienced, or been around, you know, and that's what Young Blood Podcast is all about. All about, excuse me. And you know, there's a couple other Young Blood podcasts out there. We were one of the first, by the way. Um, there's definitely been about four or five more that have popped up in the last couple of years. So I commend you guys. Welcome to the fucking family, Young Blood. 
<laughs> they're welcoming you, but yeah, I mean, this yeah, this ain't no competition, man. This is about broadcasting. It's about getting people's voices out there. And uh, at this point, uh, I hope you guys talk the same about me. So, oh yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, well, just... Dane, uh, is there anything that you want to give to the people that you feel could impact them, impact you, or uh, impact someone out there? I I'd say keep open minded. You're always going to have the best conversations when you're not thinking about your views. Like That's what's happening here. I mean, it, it can happen all around if you have open mind and just enjoy the person instead of your your political views or your public views or whatever. So that's all I can say. Just promote being social. Right on. Promote being yourself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Everyone's got their kinks, their quirks, their weirdness like us, but... I mean, it's something that's cool about you. Something that no one else is going to have. Right on, brother. Well, hey, howdy, hey, everybody. You're listening to Young Blood Podcast. It has been a fantastic episode number 41. Thank you all for this fantastic journey. Being a part of this with you has been phenomenal. Bringing these guests on, bringing Dane on. Everybody's time, yours, mine. It's just been awesome. So thanks for being a part of this. Thanks for joining us tonight. Again, Young Blood Podcast, guys. All one word. No spaces. It's really important that when you look this up, no spaces. Young Blood Podcast, guys. Y O U N G B L O O D P O D C A S T. Young Blood Podcast, y'all. 